This is Axis and Allies, my favorite board game of all time. Whenever playing, I always preferred to play the Axis powers, especially Germany, because they were always in the more fun position. They were outnumbered, but had more starting resources on the board, and I was pretty good winning most of my games. One of the things that fascinates me about this game is that the best strategy for each player to pursue tends to line up with their historical counterpart. Except for Japan, but this video isn't about them. This rule includes Germany. The best use of Germany's resources was always its land forces, because once you've knocked out the Soviets, the Allies had virtually no bridgehead into Eurasia to counterattack, at which point they usually surrender. It's the rare and foolish German player who wastes IPCs on a navy. I mean, you could build battleships and aircraft carriers, but you'll never make much use of them. And that's assuming they survive the round because they become magnets for British and American attacks. And this was the reality for Germany in World War II. They only built a couple battleships, which spent most of the war avoiding direct confrontation with the US and Royal Navies. But had the war not come when it did, Germany may have had more of a navy to speak of. In January 1939, Hitler approved of a new expansion program for the German Navy called Plan Z. And if you've explored the various alternate history forums online, you know that this is one of the pet scenarios of those trying to craft a German victory in World War II, often going hand in hand with an Operation Sea Lion. When you read discussions about Plan Z online, especially when dealing with non-naval historians, you get two reactions. You either get people thinking it would have radically changed the outcome of the war had it been pursued, or people think its implementation actually doomed Germany to failure. The reality, however, is far more mundane. But before we get to that, I would like to talk to you about this video's sponsor, World of Warships. World of Warships is a free-to-play game available on PC where you can take command of warships from World Wars 1 and 2 and engage in naval battle, allowing you to place real, historical ships in combat scenarios they never got to experience. It allows you to take control of many of the ships that were initially part of Plan Z, such as the Bismarck and Tirpitz. The game also functions like a digital museum, displaying these breathtaking recreations of the most fearsome ships of the 20th century. But they also include ships that were never built, giving you an amazing range of gameplay possibilities. And they are releasing new content every month in the form of new ships, cosmetics, and nations. It has over 40 unique maps with dynamic weather and some brilliant new water effects. You'll have access to battleships, destroyers, cruisers, submarines, and aircraft carriers to let you command both the tides and the skies. And if you get really into the game, they have an active community with a dedicated server, live streams, and tournaments. And if you're a PC person, that's fine too, because World of Warships is available on PlayStation and Xbox. And as I said earlier, all of this is free. Just check out my link down in the description below and use the promo code WARSHIPS to get exclusive rewards, including a bunch of doubloons, credits, premium account time, and a free ship after you complete 15 battles. Thanks again to World of Warships for sponsoring this video. But for now, let's get back to the history. The story of Plan Z goes back to the Treaty of Versailles. After the Great War, the German Navy was interned to allied ports around the world, with their crews held as POWs who would see repatriation in the summer of 1919. And while Germany was going through political chaos, many in the military took a wait-and-see attitude. The thinking behind this was not so much an acceptance of defeat and of the new German state, but in fact a reaction to it and a definite rejection of the new order. Weltpolitik had not been rejected, but delayed. In the aftermath of the war, Admiral von Trotha, who had supported a more aggressive naval strategy toward the end, was placed in charge of the German Navy, but he was forced to scrap the German Navy after the signing of Versailles. The treaty banned Germany from having an air force, along with banning submarines, with the army capped at 100,000 soldiers. The Rhineland was demilitarized, and the Navy was limited to only 1,500 officers. On March 12th of 1920, Wolfgang Kopp led a naval fry corps into Berlin, forcing the government to flee the city, but he eventually stood down on March 17th. In May, a Reichstag committee recommended that 200 officers be discharged or retired, including Admiral Trotha, along with any officers that participated in the mutinies. Those that remained would implement a secret plan to rebuild the German Navy. Much of Germany's military industry went into exile in order to continue developing weapons technology. The Navy worked out of the Netherlands, while the tank and aircraft industries worked out of the Soviet Union, and some submarine designers would also set up operations in Japan as well. The German Navy set up a dummy corporation in the Netherlands to continue submarine development, which was a violation of Article 19 of the Treaty of Versailles. 
The German Navy tried to navigate around the tonnage limitation by developing the Panzerschiff-class heavy cruisers in secret, while the French and British cruisers were restricted due to the Washington and London Naval Treaties, which you can learn more about in this previous video. They began building a heavy cruiser, the Deutschland, in 1929. It was more powerful than any individual heavy cruiser in the French or British fleet. The German government was hoping to use its construction as a bargaining chip. They would agree to cancel its construction in exchange for loosening the other restrictions on its navy, and by admitting it to the Washington Naval Treaty. But the French opposed any concessions to Germany, so the Deutschland, along with the Admiral Scheer and the Admiral Graf Spee, were also built. In the aftermath of the Great War, Germany's war and foreign policy focus wasn't the British, French, or Russians, but Poland, due to East Prussia being surrounded on land by it. In 1923, despite the hyperinflation in the country, the German government gave the military 100 million marks worth of gold. Most of the money would be spent on the army, but the navy would receive a share, which was split into two rearmament funds. The Naval Transport Department, under Captain Lorman, and the Weapons Department, under Captain Hansen. And during this time, the major German industrial giants were buying out their struggling smaller competitors. The Allies had set up an office in Kiel to observe the German compliance of the Versailles Treaty, and in January 1927, it reported that Germany had not complied with it and was not likely to. This was followed by a report in the Berliner Tagblatt, which uncovered a network of companies receiving money from the Naval Transport Department. In order to appease the Reichstag and international outrage, the German government dismissed numerous naval officers, including the head of the Transport Department, Lormann, along with the Defense Minister and the Commander of the Navy. In 1929, the German Navy ordered the construction of the Panzerschiff, referred to by the British as Pocket Battleships. Chancellor Heinrich Brunig had imposed austerity measures despite a worsening economy, but he did approve a modest expansion for the German Navy. But Germany was short on funds, and he had rejected a French proposal to open up French capital markets to Germany for long-term loans. This had been part of the Young Plan, the American policy to stabilize the German economy so they could continue to make reparations payments to the UK and France. In June of 1931, the British approved a moratorium on reparations payments, but France delayed their approval, which led to a major German bank collapsing and the Reichsmark being detached from gold once again. Despite this, in 1932, the Reichstag passed the Schiffbau-Schatzplan, which was yet another scheme for enlarging the German Navy, which created two production phases, 1930 to 1936 and 1936 to 1943. Now, Germany had been violating and actively undermining the peace created by Versailles for the entire post-war period. So when Hitler came to power in January 1933, he didn't really take Germany down a different path when it came to military and foreign policy. Most of those in the military establishment, regardless of whether they were pro or anti-Nazi, were more or less on board with his plans in those regards. The road to Plan Z began after the Munich Agreement, when Hermann Goering announced a build-up for the German army, what the plan intended for completion by 1942. With Hitler reassuring the head of the Reichsmarine, Eric Reiter, that war wasn't planned until 1948. At this point, Hitler expedited the construction of the Bismarck and the Tirpitz, Raider believed that the British could be more easily defeated through surface vessels attacking British commerce and tying down the Royal Navy, allowing a small number of German battleships to patrol the North Sea. This was called Plan X. A smaller version of Plan X was drafted, referred to as Plan Y, but in January 1939, both were rejected, which led to Plan Z, which appeased Hitler's desire for a more balanced fleet that centered on battleships. This new plan called for eight new heavy cruisers, six battleships, and 249 U-boats. By 1948, the German fleet was planned to include nearly 800 ships. For contrast, the U.S. Navy currently has just under 300 combat vessels. Hitler and many in the Naval Department wanted a climactic showdown with the Royal Navy, but Raider maintained his philosophy of using the Navy to attack British commerce. Most of the ships ordered for construction under Plan Z were canceled shortly after war broke out in September 1939 and Raider's strategy of using the Navy to harass British shipping was implemented. Some blame Plan Z for shifting too much of Germany's naval resources towards surface and capital ships rather than submarines, which would have been more effective and cost-efficient, but Plan Z was the culmination of nearly two decades of German naval thinking. Since the plan was discontinued eight months after it was approved, you can't really blame it for the German failure. Hitler's fantasy of a navy that could take on Britain, France, and the United States was, in reality, a holdover from the German Empire. There was nothing uniquely Nazi about it, and in some alternate timeline where the Nazis didn't come to power, Germany would have followed a similar path. 
Thanks again to World of Warships for sponsoring this video. Click my link down in the description and use the promo code WARSHIPS. I'd also like to thank my patrons for making this video possible. Patrons get early access to videos as well as access to a patrons only Discord server. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.